Hello, welcome back after the lunch break. So in the next session, we're going to hear from Gajendra, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, um, about building your first cyber forensic application using Python. So that sounds like a very interesting topic. Uh, I hope we will learn a lot. And welcome everyone, Gajendra. Hi, Matt. Am I audible? Yes. W where are you streaming from? I'm streaming from India. That oh. is southern part of India. So I just came one hour early from my office. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. OK. <laughs> Excellent. So you have already set up everything, the screen share, so we can put that on. Yeah. Just a second for the technician to. Yeah, there you go. OK, excellent. So, Gajendra, I'm going to um, leave the stage now. I'm going to monitor the chat and record all the questions. And then five minutes before the end of the the uh, session, we can have a Q&A. OK, sure. take away. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. My name is Gajendra Deshpande. And today, I will be presenting a talk on build your first uh, cyber forensic application using Python. So in today's talk, I'm going to briefly discuss about introduction to digital crimes, digital forensics, the process of investigation, the collection of evidence, then setting up Python for forensic application development, built-in functions and modules for forensic tasks, forensic indexing and searching hash functions for forensics, forensic evidence extraction, then metadata forensics, and in brief, using natural language tools in forensics. Now let us first uh, look at some statistics related to cyber crimes. Uh, the Internet Crime Report for 2019, released by U.S.'s Internet Crime Complaint uh, Center IC3 of Federal Bureau of Investigation, has revealed top four countries that are victims of Internet crimes. So USA has reported more than 60, more than 4,60,000 crimes, uh, cyber crimes, UK more than 90,000, Canada more than 33,000, India more than 27,000. Of course, these numbers are only reported numbers, but uh, unreported numbers can be much, much higher. Then according to RSA report, mobile uh, transactions are rapidly growing and cyber criminals are migrating to less protected soft channels. And also according to an article published in Indian Express on 19 November 2016, over 55% millennials in India are hit by the cyber crimes. So that is because mobile uh, phone is a soft channel and many people are not aware of the different settings uh, in the mobile phone, uh, which can uh, provide them the safe environment. Then also the recent study by Checkpoint Research has recorded over more than 150,000 cyber attacks every week during COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So there has been an increase of 30% in uh, cyber attacks compared to previous weeks. Now let us first look at the definition of forensic science. Uh, so forensic science is the use of um, scientific methods or expertise to investigate crimes or examine evidence that might be presented in the court of law. So cyber forensics is investigation of various uh, crimes happening in the uh, cyber space. So examples of cyber attacks include phishing, ransomware, fake news, fake medicine, extortion and insider frauds. And we know that uh, during pandemic and also in digital era, we are facing the we are facing a huge problem of face. Uh, we are facing a huge problem of fake message uh, circulation. Then according to DFRWS, that is Digital Forensics Research uh, Workshop, digital forensics can be defined as the use of scientifically derived and proven method toward preservation, collection, validation, identification, analysis, interpretation, documentation, and presentation of digital evidence derived from digital sources for the purpose of facilitating or furthering the reconstruction of events found to be criminal or helping to anticipate unauthorized actions shown to be disruptive to planned operations. So if you look at this definition, there are two parts. The first part speaks about the different stages in cyber uh, forensic investigation. And second part speaks about the rec reconstruction of events uh, such that the evidence can be f found and the same can be presented in the court of law. So as we have seen in the previous slide, these are the steps in investigation process, cyber forensics investigation process. So first one is identification, then collection, validation, examination, preservation and presentation. So in identification phase, what happens? An investigation officer will visit the crime location and uh, officer will try to 
uh, identify different um, objects uh, where the evidence may be present. These include um, hard drive, uh, uh, mobile phones or smartphones, cables, smart gadgets. These can also be uh, toy gadgets which look like toys but uh, maybe they are also devices such as toy pen drives. Then the next stage is collection of uh, these different objects. Uh, so investigation officer will collect all the objects and put it in a safe uh, bag such as Faraday bags or anti-static bags uh, so that the evidence cannot be altered. So this is about the collection of uh, physical evidence, uh, physical objects. Then if the computer is on or laptop is on, then the investigation officer has to take a snapshot of the entire system. So in that case, what they will do is they will just carry out the system to the lab. If a system is on, then they will just uh, perform the live forensics if tools are available. If tools are not available, then they will just pull the plug so that the system status can be uh, retained. So that is very, very important. If the system is on, then they should not turn off the system. If the system is turned off, then they should not turn in, turn it on because that will alter the status of the system and some evidence may be lost. Then third process is the validation. So note here that the um, investigation will be performed on the snapshot or the copy of the data. And once the investigation is performed, they need to ensure that the original data and the copied data are same. So for that, hash algorithms can be used. The next is the examination. So here, uh, investigation officers will use different tools. There are many commercial tools. There are uh, open source tools are also available. We can also use Python. We can use small scripts to perform examination of the evidence. The next is the preservation of the evidence. So the evidence needs to be preserved in appropriate environment, appropriate room temperature and appropriate security needs to be uh, provided. Uh, evidence needs to be stored in maybe a locker room. Uh, along with the appropriate temperature. And also, as I have mentioned, uh, evidence needs to be placed in the anti-static bags. Then final stage, which is very, very important, that is presentation of evidence in the court of law. If all the procedures laid by the law enforcement agencies are followed correctly, then the evidence can be presented in the court of law. And there is one important standard that is known as Daubert standard. Uh, in United States, uh, federal law, the Daubert standard is a rule of evidence regarding the admissibility, admissibility of expert witness uh, testimony. So a party may raise a Daubert motion, a special motion in limine, raised before or during trial to exclude the presentation of unqualified evidence to the jury. So there are some illustrative uh, factors which are considered as scientific methodology. So first one is, has the technique been uh, tested in actual uh, field conditions, uh, not just in laboratory? Has the technique been subject to peer review and publication? What is the known or potential rate of error? Do standards exist for control of techniques operation? Has the technique been generally accepted within the relevant scientific community? Then in 2003, Brain Carrier published a paper that examined rules of evidence standards, including Daubert, and compared and contrasted the open source and closed source forensic tools. So one of his key conclusions was that using the guidelines of Daubert tests, we have shown that open source tools may more clearly and comprehensively meet the guideline requirement than would closed source tools. So Python is obviously open source, so it meets the Daubert standard and so it can be used and it's certainly used in digital forensic process or investigation process as a tool. So the results are not automatic, of course, just because the source is open, rather specific steps must be followed regarding design and development and validation. So the questions are, can the program or algorithm be explained? Uh, this explanation should be explained in words, not only in code. Has enough information been provided uh, such that thorough tests can be developed to test the program? Have error rates been calculated and validated independently? Has the program been studied and peer reviewed? Has the uh, program being generally accepted by the community. So the uh, source for this information is the book by uh, Chet Hosmer uh, on Python forensics. So you can refer that book for more information. Now, next thing is setting up Python 
for forensic application development there are many factors so first one is your background and your organization support so what uh, qualification you are having in terms of say for example tools and the in terms of language knowledge uh, and whether your organization supports open source development or it, it is interested to invest in uh, commercial tools if it can invest then it's fine otherwise you need organization support to develop the tools then next is choosing the third party libraries so it is a bit risky because we are not sure whether those libraries are properly maintained if they are properly maintained yes you can use them then ides and their features so we know that if you use standard ides then uh, they provide very useful features as intellisense which will help us in typing the program and we can speed up our um, writing uh, process the next is installation so installation of operating system again there are many options you can install it as a standalone uh, system or you can uh, go for a virtual machine or even you can go for a cloud then write version of python so if you are using third party libraries this may be a problem because it may not be compatible with the uh, recent versions of python so you need to see which the third party library is compatible with which version of python and you should start using it then next is which kind of interface you like whether it is graphical or shell so some people maybe beginners may uh, love to use graphical approach but we know that more experienced people still prefer shell because uh, they just love command line interface and it is easy to uh, get output and it's also more customizable and let us look at some built-in functions and modules in uh, uh, python so uh, note here that if you want to create your first cyber forensic application you need not have to uh, write any uh, extra uh, code or you need not have to use additional libraries you can just use built-in functions available and you can start writing the code so here on the screen you can see here that we are generating the ip addresses we are generating local ip addresses that is 127.0.0.1 to 0.0.9 so they are totally uh, 10 ip addresses we are defining the range so range is a built-in function and you can also see here that append is a built-in function right so print is a built-in function so we are using just two functions range and append to generate the ip addresses and similarly it's a small uh, code which will help us to uh, list the files and directories in the present directory so for that you need to import the os module then use the get cwd method then use list dir method to list the uh, directories and just use for loop to navigate and print the files and directories in the present directory then forensic indexing and searching so you can use simple file search and index function to search for particular keywords and to find out their location so in forensic what happens is you are going to investigate a huge amount of information in terms of gbs and tbs you are not going to you don't need all that data you are looking for certain evidence based on the case you are looking for certain keywords based on the case so in that case uh, you can just specify those words and search in the uh, image of the system and if you are getting uh, those words then fine otherwise it's okay so here you can see a, a small code has been written so a uh, file has been created keywords.txt some keywords have been mentioned here and we are just using a if uh, condition here and searching for a word python so if python word is present then it says that python word is found otherwise it says that word is not found it's a very simple example but you can extend the same program to uh, achieve your goal now for that we have um, some advanced uh, package called as whoosh so it is used for forensic indexing and searching it was created and maintained by matt and it was originally created for the use in online help system of side effects software 3d animation software Houdini. so again it's a pure python library it supports fielded indexing and search fast indexing and retrieval is supported and it also supports powerful query language now how it works is in simple terms if i have to tell then you can say that you you are building a, a custom search engine 
so first you are adding all the urls to the system then you are using the query parser and it's push uh, query parser to find out the required information the next is hash functions for forensics so we know that validation step is very very important for us because we are working on the copy of the data and also we are we need to ensure that the hash of uh, the copied image and the hash of original image should be same if they are not same then that means that the uh, information has been tampered and the evidence cannot be accepted so how we can do it uh, so very simple example i have included on this uh, screen so you import hashlib library then use sha256 method to generate the message digest so we are generating message digest and storing in uh, yum then we are generating the second message digest and storing it in x then we are checking whether the message digest of both x and yum is same so in this case it is same now on this screen you can see here that in the second hash that is in x's hash i have just added one extra space at the end so in this case it says that they are not same so i'm getting false here so that means something has been tampered then forensic evidence extraction so there are various uh, uh, kinds of files and to extract the information from these kinds of files we need to use specific packages say for example if you are working on uh, images then you may have to use pillow if you are working on pdf then you may have to use py pdf if you are working on audio file or video file then again there are some packages so you here we are using a uh, pillow package and we are trying to extract the information of uh, files so generally when we use tags it gives us the properties of files and whenever we use gps tags it gives us the information such as latitude longitude and location of the uh, image where it was taken so these things are important for evidence then there is a library called as uh, py screenshot it tries to allow to take screenshots without installing third party libraries it works as a wrapper for many image processing libraries and also its wrapper is available for pillow now if you want you can take the screenshot of the entire screen here so for that you need to import the py screenshot package then use the grab method and use the save method to save it so this will take the screenshot of entire screen now you can also take the screenshot of a particular part of a screen just part of a screen you can take so for that you have to specify the coordinates x1 y1 and x2 y2 and it will take the screenshot of uh, that particular part then note here that you can also work on to improve the performance of pi screenshot but uh, performance is not the goal in evidence extraction evidence is very very important but if you want you can improve the performance by making some settings such as changing the backend and uh, setting child process to false so then metadata forensics so there is a library called as mutagen which can be used to extract the information from an audio file basically uh, so it supports various um, uh, formats uh, such as asf flac mp4 mp3 and so on so you can import mutagen library using import uh, uh, statement then specify the file name and print the value and when you print the value you can uh, see here that it says that it, the type is org verbis and the duration is 346.43 seconds and bits per second is 499821 then similarly you can specify or you can extract the information from flag file and also the from mp3 file so you can print the length and bitrate of an audio file and similarly you can extract the information from pdf file so for that you can use py pdf2 you can extract the document information such as title author and other properties then split the documents page by page merge the documents page by page then crop the pages then merge multiple pages into single page uh, encrypt and decrypt uh, pdf files and it is very useful tool for websites that manage or manipulate uh, pdfs then next 
uh, file type is PE file. So PE file stands for portable executable file, which is generally uh, available on uh, Windows operating system. But PE file package works on any operating system such as Windows or Linux. So you can extract the information of a portable executable file. So it supports uh, features such as inspecting headers, analyzing of sections data, retrieving embedded data, reading strings from resources, warning from suspicious and malformed values, and uh, so on. And next is using natural language tools. Um, so you can use NLP tools for analysis of information. We know that we are going to extract a lot of information and you can use NLP tools to find the correlation. You can use machine learning to find the correlation uh, between the evidence. So for that, there are uh, various uh, packages. So NLP tools are used for examining the text for evidence. So there are packages such as NLTK, Spacey and Textacy. So Textacy is built on top of top of Spacey and offers more uh, additional uh, features. Then if you are interested in uh, multilingual uh, processing, multilingual information processing, then you can use Stanza. It's by Stanford. It's earlier known as Stanford NLP. Now it's known as Stanza. It supports around uh, more than 60 uh, human languages and polyglot is also a very popular uh, NLP library which supports a huge number of languages but there is still a lot of scope because all languages are not supported and all features are not supported then if you are interested then you can also go for INLTK and Indic NLP if you are working on uh, or if your information is uh, written in uh, Indian languages. Of course, Stanza and Polyglot also supports Indic languages, but these are the specific packages for uh, Indian languages. And in summary, I can say that it is very important to follow the standard procedure laid by the law enforcement agencies during investigation process. If it is not followed, then court will not accept the evidence. Then there are many open source as well as commercial tools for digital forensics. Learning to develop your own tool is always advantageous because that's an additional skill. And some organizations may not be interested in investing to buy a costly uh, product. Then many tools written in Python are pure Python uh, implementations. And most importantly, Python and open source tools comply with Dobber standard. So with this, I would like to conclude my, th my talk and I thank EuroPython organizers for giving me an opportunity to uh, speak in this conference. Thank you. So thank you very much, Gajendra, for the talk. Very interesting. And uh, we have a question for you. So let me see it's this one regarding searching. Uh, would you have any good advice on searches for keywords outside of one's spoken languages going beyond dropping stuff into Google Translate? Uh, that's a that's an interesting question. Maybe we may have to we it's it we know that Google and other things they are keyword based searches. Maybe we may have to go for uh, semantic searches where we are going to define the ontology. And I think that is going to give more better results. OK, so <clears throat> I think uh, using the, the uh, there, there are some tools for, for NLP where you can you know download ontologies for different languages. So maybe that's a good uh, way to search for keywords. So. Um, there is another question here. What are some tips for starting with NLP? Uh, it depends on what kind of problem they are solving. But the most important thing will be cleaning the data, <laughs> <laughs> removing all unwanted information and keeping just the relevant information. So basic things like tokenization, stemming, lemmatization, uh, named entity recognition, all those concepts should be clear. They can start with those things. Right. Um, related to that, I have a question as well because I, I heard I listened to some other talks on the on the topic. Is there some kind of like a cookbook for NLP, 
where you can research these these things because uh, a, a lot of these, except, especially for the cleaning of the data, a lot of these things are experience based, right? So it's you don't immediately find the different things that you need to do unless you know and have experience with them. Yeah, yeah. Experience is the cookbook, I can say. <laughs> 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 because uh, the domain knowledge is very, very important or we need to interact with the domain expert to clean the data. Right. Okay, then uh, final question is, will you be sharing the slides? So this is actually something that I uh, am asking all of the speakers. So th there is a mechanism on our website where you can go to your talk page and you can upload slides. So I would suggest that you, you do that yeah. and then people can um, pick the slides from there. I will post the link to the, the talk um, entry to the chat and then people can pick it up from there. All right, so sure. thank you very much. There are no more questions. Um, you may want to go over to the uh, breakout room, me, and then answer additional questions people may have. I will post the, the questions uh, that have come up to that, to that room. But we've already answered all of those. So, right. Thank you very much, Katrenda. Okay. okay. Thank, nice you, you. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.